Jess and I used to be super close, like sisters almost, but things have been weird ever since I got married to my husband, Tom. For some reason, she never really liked Tom, even though he's always been super kind and respectful to her. Welcome to the Hallett Halls of Magic's Monologue. I'm Magic, your curator of personal growth and the sage keeper of the keys to today's tome of wisdom and knowledge. Today's video, Cousin's Wedding Invite Turns into Marriage Destroying Nightmare. But before embarking on an expedition to knowledge, I thank you for the thumbs up you've given me, the subscribe, and the smacking of the bell to instantly be notified of new videos. Let's begin the journey. This lesson video reveals why you want to calmly take in information, evaluate it, and verify it, and then plan on how you will react to it. Not all people bearing gifts of information are doing so out of the goodness of their hearts. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to go to my cousin's wedding after she almost ruined my marriage? So this has been eating me up for a while, and I need someone outside perspective on whether I'm in the wrong here. A few months ago, my cousin Jess, not her real name, pulled something that nearly destroyed my marriage. Jess and I used to be super close, like sisters almost, but things have been weird ever since I got married to my husband, Tom. For some reason, she never really liked Tom, even though he's always been super kind and respectful to her. Anyway, out of nowhere, Jess decided to tell Tom that I had been cheating on him with some guy I used to know in college. She told him this elaborate story about how we were seeing each other behind her back and meeting up after work and all this stuff that was 100% made up. Tom confronted me and we had the biggest fight of our marriage. Slap to the back of the head of Tom. Dude, I get it. No man or woman wants to receive information their spouse is cheating or has been for some time. However, this brother acted without thinking, without evaluating, and then attempting to gather evidence to prove or disprove the accusations which would be need for a divorce proceeding to use in an at-fault state or as leverage in negotiations in a no-fault state. Guys, can you see how he was not thinking? When you have information like this dropped on your lap, you always take a deep breath get a grip, and then channel your inner Joe Friday from the TV series Dragnet and say to yourself, all we want are just the facts, ma'am. Play master's level chess while everyone else is playing checkers. He was devastated, and honestly, I was too, because I had no idea where this was coming from. We nearly separated over this, but luckily, after a lot of talks, tears, and some detective work, Tom finally believed me, and we managed to work things out. Much of this could have been avoided if he'd taken the time to evaluate and gather evidence. I mean, what if she was cheating? Then, he would have the evidence and know for sure. However, if he found nothing, then he could have also gone to her 
and let her know her cousin was talking crap behind her back. I also want to point out that he took the word of someone I'm sure he knows who doesn't like him. That alone should have made him go, hmm. I'm just glad they were able to find a place of truth and save their marriage, since she had no proof to the contrary, since you can't prove a negative, which is a horrible place to be for any spouse. It turns out Jess was just jealous of my relationship and wanted to stir things up for whatever reason. She never admitted it, but she got caught in so many lies that it was pretty obvious what her intentions were. Right there. Lesson time, guys. Three things women, generally speaking, often do that men tend not to. One, women love drama. And if they don't have it, how many of them will create it? What? No? You think I'm wrong? Okay, so soap operas were created for men, right? Uh, okay, well, what about romance novels? Well, those were created for men. Oh, I know, most of reality TV, especially shows like The Bachelor, were created for men. Wait, they weren't? Do you want to tell me when women get together with their box wine and they all get all giddy with the latest gossip? If this was not true, then why are there t-shirts, bumper stickers, and license plates with the term drama queen? For many women, if they don't have drama in their lives, they will create it. Two, women will cock block, think sabotage, other women from pleasure if they are not the ones getting it, or if it's with a guy they want for themselves even after he's made it clear he's not interested in her. Three, y'all know women will sabotage another woman's relationship out of pure jealousy because that woman was in a happy relationship. Other single women will do it because they want their old party wing girl back so they can all be alone and miserable together. This, by the way, is why, pay attention here guys, you always evaluate who her friends are, who she hangs out with, and the beliefs and moral code of her family members. Remember, if you want a glimpse into your possible future, look at her mom and then her mom and dad's relationship dynamics because that will be the model she will follow with you. And by the way, for my female viewers, that applies to men as well. Look at the dynamic of their parents. What I'm about to say, many women will get their thongs in a bunch over, and it can apply to a small number of men. However, it affects females more than men. Women, as a general group, yes, there are exceptions, are mirrors. We men need to understand that women, generally speaking, are not independent thinkers. They do not think in terms of, is this fact, information, or belief the truth, as it is preferred in the traditionally masculine aspects of the male social universe. They often think from the mental frame of, Will others accept me if I think this is true? Case in point, all women are tens when they are objectively not. Yet, if you ask a group of women and they will all parrot the same talking point, all women are tens. 
This mentality originates back to tribal times, when women and beta men would conform to what other, whatever the tribe's consensus was to not face exile. Over thousands of years of conditioning, this became habitual in the way many women think. They follow whatever fashion or social trend, political stance, or social norm is the most popular at the current time. This is why, gentlemen, you must pay attention to who she spends the most time with and their moral code. If a friend or most of her friends are doing it, whatever it is, like being divorced, cheating, 304s, sooner or later, she will too. Okay, end of lecture. Back to the story. Now, Jess is getting married in a couple of months, and I've been invited to the wedding. My family is pressuring me to go because family is family, and you can't hold a grudge forever. But I honestly don't want to see her, let alone celebrate her big day after what she did. Every time I think about it, I just get angry all over again. I know weddings are supposed to be happy occasions, but I don't think I can fake smile and pretend everything is okay. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to go, or should I just suck it up and attend to keep the peace? Right, well, first off, you, my dear, are not the a-hole. First, your cousin for what she did is. And next, your family for enabling her behavior, which means she will do something equally as stupid and cruel again in the future. This is where I would suggest to Tom, he needs to pick up the phone and in the most manly way possible, tell them all to go forth and propagate the earth by themselves, and that I and my wife will not be attending, and there will be no further discussion on the matter, and to leave my wife alone, or you will not like what I do next. If they persist, and they will, Block them on all social media and all media and go on with your life. However, that's just me and what I would do. You see, guys and gals, me, my wife, and my marriage have been disrespected. And this is where I would exercise the protect part of providing and protecting. In the comments below, drop a comment if you get where I'm going and coming from, if not, or if you do. If you are one of the unsubscribed viewers, that would be 89.4% of you, who watch me and found value in my channel, it's time to show it by doing three things. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell, and share this with at least three or four friends who need to learn from my channel. Confession is good for the soul. Send me your personal relationship stories to share, or if you see an article online you think I should cover, send the link to stories at magicsmonologue.com. If you have a moment, stop by my YouTube community tab and vote on my surveys or subscribe to my locals, Rumble, Twitter, Getter, or Gab. Through this, you're leading by example, encouraging other men to rise higher and ensuring you live a life of passion, purpose, and prosperity. If you can't wait for my next new video, then click on one of these right now and watch another. Until next time.
Thank you for watching this short clip. Check out the long version on my website.